The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this revision session. I am Asa Sinista Tebo, a Mona level teacher for Lower Seed. To begin, we'll start with the correction of homework. The homework that was given in the previous lesson. I read the homework. You were asked to state the technique that was used to score a wooden mask and justify your answer. You were asked to state the technique that was used to score a wooden mask and justify your answer. The answer is carving. The carving technique was used to score that mask, the wooden mask we saw in the previous lesson. So the reasons for this technique was it was easy to do carf, carving on wood. And carving is mostly done on wood, especially soft wood, so that we can easily come out with the structure. So the carving technique was used to carve the wooden marks we saw in the previous lesson. So let's now move to the module. Our module is module one, known as handicraft. Model is handicraft. We look at the lesson under this handicraft. It is lesson four. Our lesson is lesson four, which is titled Safety Measures in Sculpting. Safety measures in sculpting, and we'll present this lesson following this plan. Under the plan, we'll have objective, prerequisite, examine the real life situation, followed by the learning, lesson content, and look at the summary of the lesson. We'll probably look at some application exercise, and finally, we'll look at homework. We'll begin with the objective of the lesson. And what is the objective of a lesson? Students are expected to know all these, come up with solutions of all these objectives at the end of this lesson. So, the first objective will be to define key words, define some key words that are used in safety measures in sculpting. We list the importance of safety measures. We list the importance of safety measures followed by stating the causes of accident during sculpting and methods to reduce them. Then after, we we'll look at how to apply personal prospective equipment, known as a PPE, and other safety measures in sculpting. Right, lastly, under this lesson, we have handling an emergency situation. How can you handle an emergency situation in a sculpting workshop? when you're applying the safety rules. Let's look at the prerequisites of the lesson. Well, I want to assume, or I want to expect, expect you to already under, do, understand an identification of some sculpted object. I expect you to also know the importance of plastic arts, know the identification of some PPE techniques, Personal protective equipment, 
so I identify some of them and have a knowledge of the uses of some PPE. We now move to the learning activity. Our learning activity will have the definition of keywords, followed by importance of safety measure in sculpting, and also look at the causes of accident during sculpting. Then after, we move to the personal protective equipment, that is PPE and safety in sculpting. We we'll also look at other safety measures during sculpting. And lastly, handling an emergency situation in sculpting. Let's now look, examine a real life situation. And our real life situation will read, you listen keenly while I read the real life situation. Your father is a sculptor and he produces many objects from wood and metal. His activity is mostly characterized by injuries on his hands, eyes, leg when working in the workshop. How will you help him overcome these difficulties? I read, your father is a sculptor and he produces many sculpted objects from wood and metal. His activity is mostly characterized by injuries on his hands, eyes, leg when working in the workshop. How will you help him overcome these difficulties? We will begin with the definition of keywords. We have the first word there is safety. What is safety? So safety is a need to identify ways of preventing injuries during sculpting. Safety is a need to identify ways of preventing injuries during sculpting. The second word, keyword, safety measures. And so safety measures are activities and precautions taken to improve or reduce risks or accident. These are measures that you take in order to reduce accident in the workshop. That is sculpting workshop. And the last keyword there is personal protective equipment. These are equipment that are worn, you put on your body, or the hands, the leg, or even the head to minimize exposure to variety of has hazards or accident. Things that you put on your body, like an apron, the gloves, headset, all those things no smart to protect or you minimize injuries. We will now move to the importance of safety measures in sculpting. The importance of safety measures in sculpting. One, how is it important to follow these safety measures? One is to avoid taking risks and engaging in any unsafe act followed by prevent accident, injuries, and work-related illness, making workplace safer. That is why safety measures is important in sculpting. Because when you follow all these methods, you prevent accident, injuries, and other related uh, illness. Let's continue with importance of safety measures in sculpting. We'll, move, we'll look at another one. It helps to follow health rules and keep you healthy. If you follow these safety measures, it will help you to keep yourself healthy and also follow health rules. Moreover, we we'll also have protect your well-being. When you follow safety measures, it will help you to protect your well-being. You will not be injured, you will not have wounds, you will not have broken bones, you will not hit your head or your eyes or dust will not enter your eyes. So when you protect, when you follow these safety rules, it helps you to protect your well-being. It also helps to perform job more effectively. In case if you put on your boots, your gloves, when working, you know, do your, your well arm for the work. 
And uh, somebody who is working with the bare hands or bare leg. And lastly, we have avoid, avoid lost time and increase productivity. Because if we put on all these rules, we are able to work faster and increase productivity. Meanwhile, if we don't do that, it's the vice versa. It will reduce our productivity because we'll spend more time in taking care of ourselves. Meanwhile, if we would have protected it, we will not spend more time and hence we increase productivity. Let's look at the causes of hazards or accident during sculpting. The causes, what can cause us accident or hazardous things in hazardous a eh, 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 Attitude, the attitude in a sculpting workshop. One, these are the things that have, can cause us accident. When you're lifting something up in the workshop, you have to be careful. That's what I say, safety measures. When you're lifting something, you have to be careful. If you're tired, you have to stop work and rest. That's fatigue. If you're tired, you have to stop work and rest. Because if you're tired and you continue working, it might lead to another dangerous situation. Dehydration. If you feel tired and dehydrated, you need water. If you're thirsty, take water to increase the body fluid rather than working with a weak system. Another one would be poor lightning. You're working in an environment that is dark. You know, there's no light. You're working in the dark. For example, if you're cutting a wood or you're scraping wood to do carving of a wooden mat, and you're doing it in that, you can injure yourself. So we have to be careful in this type of process. Another one would be wood dust, lead-based lead paint. When you're working in an environment with dust, you have to be careful because this dust can get into our eyes and nostrils and we know what it can cost. Another one, you can stumble and fall. When you're working in this type of area, you should make sure that maybe even the floor is roughed so that you cannot stumble easily and fall. So when all you are doing all these things, you have to be careful. Finally, another one too is stress. Move to stress. Stress, you can be stressed up, or you stress up, you are supposed to stop work and not continue with the work. And lastly, we have injuries. If you have an injury on the hand, on the face, on the neck, whatever part of your body, you have to be careful or you Stop work for some days for that injury to get healed. If not, you're causing more harm than good to yourself. We will now move to continue with another causes, another causes of accident in the workshop. Another cause can be inadequate ventilation and high temperature. Imagine you walking in the place where the temperature is too high. You're feeling uncomfortable. You need to avoid all that. If not, it will cause you accident. Hanging wires and cables that you can pass and maybe hang your leg and all or not on your body and then it can pierce you or whatever thing. And the cables that is electrified can shock you. So you have to be careful with all this type of thing. Next will be chemicals, solvent, glues and splashes. Especially glue, we know what glue can do. So we have to avoid touching that or this type of thing we don't what we are not supposed to touch it with. For example, you take a glue with your hand, as well as on the strong glues, we know what they can do. Or when it falls into our eyes, or, or chemicals that work in the lab, can work in the lab, and so dangerous chemicals and fall on you. Another one will be electric shocks. Be careful with electric shocks in the workshop. Burns or fire, or using sharp objects, you have heat, has strokes, Noise, too much noise in the noisy environment, and finally, stress. Let's now move to methods of reducing these hazards. We have had all the hazards above. I want to look at the methods in reducing hazard. The first method here will be you have to wear your personal protective equipment. We have mentioned the personal protective equipment that you need to cover the personal part body parts like the hand, the eyes, the head, the leg, can report any problem. If you're working and not feeling comfortable or any machine is bad, things like that in the workshop, you have to report. Look another one, you follow by proper lift and handling heavy object. Want to lift an object, don't just take it anyhow. You have to be careful. You have turn off all machineries 
after use. That's another important method. You finish in the workshop, you turn off all machineries after use. Followed by locate and identify all emergency related features in the environment, e.g., first aid kits, eye wash stations, fire extinguishers, emergency phone numbers. When you're working in the workshop, you have to make sure that you you have identified all these things and where they are so that when in case of any accident or fire breakout, you know where to get a fire extinguisher. So those are some of the methods that are used to reduce hazards. And so we want to look at personal protective equipment and safety during sculpting. Let's go we want to move chronologically to the personal protective equipment that is PPE in a sculpting workshop. And the first, we'll start with gloves, fingers. You have gloves, finger guards, arm covering. These ones, we use them to protect our skin from cuts, chemicals, and thermal bonds, and run up punctures. Some of these things can destroy us. They didn't work in the workshop. So we need to put on all these to protect our skin from chemicals and thermal bonds. We also have hard helmet. Hard helmet. Hard hat or helmet. What is the use of this? It prevents head injuries caused by falling, flying or fixed objects. For example, they can put an object somewhere in a workshop and if you don't have an helmet, by passing, something can fall on you and you know what that can cause, can give you wound on the head. We have the ear, that's the, that's the helmet, this one is for the head. We have the ear plug or muff. The ear plug, it helps from exposure to excessive noise. It helps to prevent you from exposure to excessive noise. You wait on your ears. To protect the ears from excessive noise when working in a workshop, especially with filing machines and, and others. The third PPT equipment is the face mask. You all know what a face mask is. See, are a shield, a respirator. So it prevents us from inhaling dust. A nose mask prevents us from inhaling dust. We cover our nostrils, our mouth. Prevent us from inhaling doors, fumes, gases, or spray toxic substances that have that uh, uh, and full face protection. You can also wear a full face protection mask to protect ourselves from these gases or dust in the workshop. Let's continue with uh, 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 other PPT equipment. Another one here will have the eye protection. Eye protection, you can put on a goggle. And wedding shields, like that. I'm putting this one, you see on the diagram, you have a, 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 a goggle, this goggle, or a wedding shield. Or you doing wedding, you can put on a shield like what this one is putting on. This eye protection is able to protect the eye when mixing acetic acid and burnt lime or pouring benzene during casting. When you're doing casting, when you're molding a solid metal, solid material, to become liquid. While pouring it, some of the liquid can splash into the eye. So we wear it to protect our eyes from these materials. Another uh, PPT, PPE uh, material is to protect our leg. We have the legging, foot guard, and safety shoes. This is another material, another safety equipment to protect our, our body. It is the boot we see here. You prevent falling, you wear a boot, you, it, it, you, it, you, it would prevent you not to fall easily or roll on sharp objects, especially when, it, when it's, the floor is wet. It will help you to avoid all that. This boot too can also help us to protect our, our feet from electric shocks. That's why they are good for us to put on shoes while walking in the workshop. 
Let's continue with another PPE equipment, the body shield. The body shield is like a jacket, an apron, a lab coat, overall, full body suit that can protect your body from splashes. You are pouring the chemicals you said can protect your body from splashes, can protect your body from little wounds in the workshop, protect your body from dust, all those you can use an apron or a lab suit. You will now move to other safety measures. This one, there are ways. There are ways used during techniques of sculpture. So always, always carve or cut in the direction away from you and keep hands away from you. That is, these are not equipment, but there are other ideas, ways that we use in order to prevent injuries during sculpting. So when you are carving a material, you don't carve towards you, go right carve it towards you. The, 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 the chisel can, can uh, move accidentally to your direction. So you carve away from you. Another one is avoid pets and children around the workshop. You have a workshop with dangerous object, knives, uh, uh, chisel and all those things. You have to avoid children not to come and injure themselves. Or you avoid pets like dogs and cats around the workshop. So that is that for safety equipment. We also have another environmental uh, uh, protection that we can help, help us to prevent ourselves in the, work, in, in the working environment. That is to keep your environment tidy. Because if you don't keep your environment tidy, you can fall on a pin or a needle. That would harm you. You don't block fire exits. You have a place where you have uh, a fire can easily, or the fire extinguisher, you don't block that environment so that you can easily get a fire extinguisher in case of accident. Avoid trailing cables by reducing activities closer to the plug socket. And that will follow by adequate lighting and ventilation system. Then after, you can also store chemicals in containers and light, lit them tightly to secure it. Lastly, read and interpret MSDS and product level information. So continue with another safety measures. Do not take or swallow alcohol in the building. Learn the right technique. Install a smoke detector in the work area. For example, a fire extinguisher. Lastly, keep material in the original place. Let's now look at handling an emergency situation. How do you handle an emergency situation when somebody has gotten an accident? One, you take charge and call out for help. Two, you assess the hazard and make the area safe. Followed by find out what happened. Next, you identify yourself and offer help. Also, if the head or spinal injury are suspected, support the head or neck. Then you assess the respons responsiveness of the, the injured person. Send someone or go for help. Administer first aid to the injured person. To sum up, we have gone through the definition of keywords of the lesson. We have gone through the importance of safety measures in sculpting. We have also looked at causes of accident during sculpting. And why not personal? We we'll look at the personal protective equipment and safety in sculpting. We we'll have also looked at safety measures during sculpting. And finally, we we'll have looked at the handling an emergency situation in the sculpting workshop. We we'll move to application exercise of the lesson. The first exercise we we'll have is what is the problem in the situation earlier stated. You need to identify ways of preventing injuries during sculpting by his father from our real life situation. So exercise two, what are the possible solutions to the problem? We we'll have the answers. To prevent these injuries, you wear gloves, you wear goggles, you put on boots, and hearing aids. 
What is the answer? What are the, what are those possible things that the, the father can put on to to prevent injuries? We have we have gloves. Gloves we mostly wear them on the hand. We have goggles. We have or you can put on boots and hearing aids to avoid injuries in the workshop. Exercise three. Which device is used to pre protect the following body parts? We have had that in our lesson. And question two, exercise three. Which device is used to protect the body from injuries from the following body parts? For example, our hand. Which device do we use to protect our hand? As men mentioned is the globe. We use a globe on our hands to protect it from injury. Our eyes, we use goggles. Our feet, we use a boot or hard shoes on our feet. And the fourth one is entire body. What do you use in protecting your entire body? We said we use an apron. So these are the answers for exercise three. We have a hand glove, we have eye goggles, foot covering or a pair of boots and then we have an apron so let's look at exercise four it says identify the following ppe equipment we look at the equipment a b c and d the first equipment is hand gloves the second equipment is goggles on the eyes. The third, a pair of boots and an apron. Exercise five, what are the causes of accident in a workshop? What are the causes of accident in a workshop? We have one, carelessness, ignorance, not respecting the rules, what about improper clothing and using unsafe material? I using material that are not safe. So we have these are the causes of accident. If you're working in a workshop, you are not careful, you can have an accident. If you are ignorant about uh, safety measures, you have an accident. If you don't respect the rules, you have an accident. If you do improper clothing, if you don't allow wearing your apron or your lab jacket, you have an accident that we are not using unsafe materials. So all this we have to be careful in order to avoid accident in the workshop. So in the course of this lesson, we went through the following references. We use the dictionary and other important sites to get our uh, lessons done. So we can also use these references for further research. Homework. Your friend is going for a training on how to make a wood mask. What are the safety measures you are advising or her to follow at the workshop? I read again. Your friend is going for a training on how to make a wood mask. What are the safety measures you are advising or her to follow at the workshop? We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on process of making a wooden mask. Next lesson is process of making a wooden mask. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyom, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen 